Hey guys, as I've mentioned in previous videos, the HDW5831RZE model is my current favorite 4K or 8 megapixel camera. It combines a great image quality for a decent price and it's been serving me very well over the past year. And although I still recommend those cameras, I am testing new models and here's a little sneak peek of one of my test setups. And these have a different sensor, which might make them a little bit better in low light. But I'm still in the middle of my testing, and I should have that video out somewhere next month, I think. And I think it's going to be close, but, well, you'll have to wait for that video. Anyway, back to the HDW5831R-ZE, whatever, that one. Now and then, Dahua releases new firmware. Generally, this is three or four times a year, and these bring uh, bug fixes plus security improvements or fixes, and sometimes some minor features. And well, this video is about one, or actually two of those features that it introduces, and that is RTMP streaming. So this feature was introduced in the newest 2019 firmware for that camera, alongside with being able to use Google Chrome or Firefox without a plugin and see the live video of the cameras. But that RTMP feature is what caught my interest. In theory, with that feature, you no longer need a PC to facilitate a live stream, but the camera itself can push it out to whatever RTMP platform you'd like to use. So this can be your own RTMP server, or actually YouTube supports RTMP stream ingest. So in theory, you could set up the camera and it would stream directly to YouTube from inside of the camera. You no longer need a PC or anything else. So I've been testing that and it actually works great. So let's take a look at that and let's upgrade the firmware and set this up and I'll show you how to do this. To get started with that, you need the firmware. And Dahua used to be better at this, but they host a bunch of firmware on their international website. But for some reason, they suck at updating it for the last year and you can only find older versions right now. So Dahua, work on that. Luckily, there's other resources on the internet and I'll provide some links in the description below where you can find the firmware. A word of caution, upgrading your firmware can be risky. It can go wrong. Most often it doesn't, especially if you have a supported international model, but it can go wrong and I caution you to do so. I am someone who likes updating their stuff and running the most recent versions, but there's also something to be said for if it ain't broke, don't fix it. So decide yourself. Okay, now that we've downloaded the file, let's update the camera. To do this, first log into the camera Go to the general menu and select the update section. There you can browse for the file you need and hit upload. This can take about two minutes and your web page will need to be refreshed, etc. Don't worry, your camera will come back. Okay. Once it's up with the new firmware, the first thing you notice when you log in is that now the live image appears without any plugin or something like that. Great, that comes in handy when setting up the camera. So let's check if we have the upgraded firmware. Yep, seems all right. And then the second thing we do is changing the video settings. YouTube doesn't support H.265 or any smart codecs. So I set it to H.264. Disable Smart Codec, 4K, set it to CBR, and choose 10 Mbit or 10,240 kilobit as the data rate. Let's save that and then check our audio settings. Okay, my audio settings are already correct at AAC with 48,000 kilohertz. So let's continue to the RTMP screen. Here we can say if you have your own local RTMP server and fill in those details, or you can use a custom URL. That's the option we're going to choose. And we need some data from YouTube. So let's go to the YouTube website. 
Once you're on the YouTube website, you go into the Creator Studio and select that you want to do a live stream now. If you're in the new interface, this is hidden under other features and again, live stream now. Here, we'll scroll down to the bottom of the page and it will list a URL and a stream key. First, we copy the URL part and we copy that over from the YouTube interface into our camera interface. Then we go back to the YouTube interface and we select to show the key. We copy that key, go back to the camera interface and paste it there. Make sure that you separate the URL and the key you just copied with a slash. And well, it should look something like this. Once that's done, hit, hit enable and save and go back to the YouTube interface. Now, this could take a little while, but it should automatically start showing that it's receiving a stream and the image of your camera should pop up in the window. Here we can verify that we're actually receiving a 4K stream. And let me maximize that and, well, wave to you from outside. After a few minutes, the streaming bar will turn green, and that means that YouTube thinks it's receiving a decent stream. Now, I've been testing this, and the longest I've streamed is, uh, I think, three or four hours, and that's worked without a problem. If your camera has an integrated microphone, like my favorite model does, that also works great, and it transfers the video and audio to YouTube. So, this is awesome. Now you can just grab a camera, give it power, connect it to the internet, Enter a few details, voila, live stream. I'm really excited about this feature and I think it's another great reason to buy this model camera. For instance, the new models I'm testing do not have this feature and who knows if they'll ever get it. So I can already think of numerous uses for this feature, although I'm not sure what they'll think if we all start streaming our IP cameras to YouTube 24 hours a day. But, you know, and well, that's it. As I mentioned, firmware download links and, well, the link to my review of this camera are down in the description. Thank you for watching, and I hope to see you guys back in the next video. Bye-bye.